Good evening, this is the Oscar X Review with Brother Bro. It's time to review West Side Story. This is Steven Spielberg's remake of the Broadway musical West Side Story, also adapted into a 10 Academy Award winning film in 1961. Now you have not seen the original, but I actually did my homework and I watched the original last week. And there's a lot about the story that I think could use an update. Just stylistically, the old film is very charming, but it does feel a little silly for today's standards. That's not really a fault with the movie. Glaringly obvious, you know, the, the brown face needs an update. And so I think this story makes a lot of sense to update. There were a lot of choices made in this one by Tony Kushner and Steven Spielberg that I really agreed with. In fact, most decisions that they made, I thought were for the better. It gives a little more social context to this conflict going on between these white gang members and Puerto Ricans. And especially the first scene, the opening, I was surprised that immediately they create this disparity in how the police and the justice system views this white gang versus this Puerto Rican gang. And I had a thread that I was really interested in about whether we perceive intrinsic good in white people who commit crimes versus holding people of color to a higher standard. I felt like this was done well in that beginning scene and when the Jets have their musical number in, I think it was the police department. Yeah, I really loved a lot of this movie. I mean, it is just one of the most dazzling movies I've seen all year. The lighting choices and the colors are so vibrant and beautiful. The choreography is stunning. There were a lot of creative decisions made to change the locations of these key musical numbers in the film, and I liked all of them. The set pieces looked amazing and there's a lot more movement in this one, especially with the camera work. Right at the beginning of this film, five minutes in, I'm like, this is just the magic of cinema. This is pure movie magic right here. I think it does a great job balancing itself tonally, capturing the feel and the joy of an old Hollywood musical, but it also feels very much like an updated take on that. We're getting the exact same lyrics from the original, the exact same songs and the same compositions. And it really is only the dialogue in between those scenes that's change and the dialogue has changed pretty drastically and as I said before I liked pretty much all those changes that they made and I think this version does a lot to flesh out a lot of the conflicts in the original that felt more flat. Scenes that I thought were absolutely stunning and gorgeous. The scene in the gymnasium and when they meet under the bleachers. The lighting was absolutely breathtaking to me. The scene when they fight in the end and the America song. Just beautifully done scenes. And the intro, I would say. Yeah, and then the opening shot. The opening shot is is amazing. I was like, oh, Spielberg, like, thank you for taking me on a journey. Janusz Kaminski and the production designer and Spielberg's direction, his blocking, the choreography is just top notch. It's some of the most dazzling filmmaking of the year. And holy shit, it deserves like a ton of Oscar nominations for those things alone. That's sort of like my 10 out of 10 version of this movie. Like those scenes alone, 10 out of 10. And then there's the part that's like, a middling like 7 out of 10. The 7 out of 10 is the romance. This is 7 out of 10 because I love how it's shot and I think those scenes are beautifully lit as well. But the story there, I did not really feel connected with this romance at all. And this could be very subjective. Like I actually can't put my finger on exactly why I felt this way, but I was not totally enamored by the casting of Ansel Elgort with Rachel Zegler. There's a lot of performances by contrast that I thought felt very authentic and lived in and real. Like I could see who they were. And these characters didn't feel as real. You know, Rachel Zegler is playing someone who's very starry eyed. And so she's a little bit like fictional in that way. I don't know how much you can bring that character to life from the source material, given that she's so like, such a like wide eyed child. You know, I'm no expert, but I couldn't help but feel that her accent was odd. However, I do think she's really good. And I did think she was the best in the musical numbers where Ansel Elgert wasn't also there because I just wasn't connecting to that. So it could have also been a subjective thing, like I'm not into the romance, so I don't really feel the performance coming through it. But there were scenes when she was obviously very good and she has an amazing voice. And Ansel Elgort, I think it's a little bit the same where I think they could have done a better job casting, but I also thought he was just fine. I thought Rachel Zegler was very good, but Ansel Elgort felt like a little bit of an uninspired casting choice. And this character was very flat in the original, but Ansel Elgort kind of just does an acceptable job in the role. I don't think he's necessarily bad. I just think he didn't elevate the character. That central romance was also one of the bigger problems for me with the original. It's a love at first sight kind of thing. And to me, that's just very silly. Like, does that make me, I guess, like a romantic skeptic? I don't know, but it felt silly at times. And increasingly so, I thought the scene under the bleachers, I was like, look, if you're gonna do a love at first sight scene, you're gonna shoot it like that. And I'm gonna be totally on board. Mm -hmm. But then the scene on the balcony, I thought that was fine. 
But then when they started singing goodnight to each other, I was like, ah, it's a little silly. That's a little weird. And then the next scene where they're in like the church, it was like, yeah, this is getting a little too much for me. And that relationship culminates in, you know, the movie's worst decision. And it didn't help that their connection felt very shallow. Everything outside of the scenes with those two worked for me like pretty much perfectly. I thought the scenes with the Jets were really great also. And that is led by Mike Faist, who is a standout here. Yeah, that was a character they really fleshed out in this adaptation. And you could definitely see the vulnerability of these characters too. I like how it showed that they're coming from this place of insecurity where they're supposed to be coming from families who make it out of these neighborhoods before the non-white people start start pouring in they're like the Caucasians who couldn't make it out and they don't have an excuse because they're Caucasians it's supposed to be built for them the movie definitely showed where those characters insecurities were coming from which I thought was a really smart move Ariana DeBose though is the definitive standout of the whole cast I mean every second that she's on screen like she has some sort of magnetic presence I thought she was outstanding in this film and I would love to see her take the trophy, the Oscar for this. My eyes were like always on her. In our Q&A, she said that she wanted to create this Anita for a new generation. And you could feel like the second she was on screen that she was going to be seen that way. And that's what Rita Moreno had from the original. It's kind of this undefinable quality where you're just drawn to that character on the screen. Rita Moreno is also really good in this. She's in it, you know, a fraction of the time Ariana DeBose is, but she has that one song that people were applauding at. She has another scene that's really good where she kind of gets like a push in and a line. Like she really fit that character. She had this sort of ferocity in her. David Alvarez I also thought was very strong. He's not given maybe quite as much depth as some of these other characters, but I loved his like display and presentation of masculinity and as this protector, a gang member that you feel sympathy for. You know, the forgiveness part made me feel kind of sick. I'm not gonna say what this is, but it happens like two thirds in. You have a world where for a Latino character to trust a white character, they have to really prove that. And to make the Latino characters so forgiving when their true tribalism comes out, to have a character completely be ignorant to that and to totally forgive them and not see it, it almost erases the fact that of course this person has seen violence inflicted towards her and her family. And this character has to be sort of enraged about that too, doesn't she? Like, wouldn't she be this way? And this film is just like, no, nah, she's just not for like no reason. And it was so disappointing for me that I was like enraged when this happened. But I know most people are not as like offended by that as I was, but you agree with me here. Let's just say that I believe forgiveness has limits and this movie certainly fucking doesn't. Unlike you though, I knew this was coming or I hoped it wasn't coming, but I'd seen the original. That was the worst part of the original in my opinion. So when I saw it in this new one, I was like, I hope they don't do it or I at least hope they make it less silly, but they didn't really. Just ask yourself if you've seen the movie or you know the original, would you have forgiven? If that happened to you, you would not, you would not have. It's just not believable, I'm so sorry. And it's not only just like this one character's forgiveness, it's somebody else's reaction to yeah. that, well, which no, is I think even it's more the reaction. another layer of disturbing. My feelings are all over the map here because that part of the story, I, I, I hate it, I hate it. But I can focus on other aspects of this film and say that so much of it is outstanding. There was also one other part that made me feel sick and it was when a lot of the Jets were about to like rape somebody. I was like, they're gonna cut this out of the new one, right? Because it just it just is totally unnecessary, right? And, and it also just was a point where it made them so disgustingly vile that like, I can't even believe I spent time with any of these people at all. Like it was so gross. I felt like kind of exhausted and drained from it. It was also just unnecessary. Like they could have just cut it out. It would have been the same exact movie. I think the story at its core has this sort of message where it's like both sides are perpetuating the issue equally. And I disagree with that because there's a clear racial dynamic where one side is an oppressor. And so while they did flesh out the racial conflict, some of the problems with the original are still kind of there. It's kind of a coming together movie and saying like, we're all victims of this thing. Why can't we just all put the weapons aside? You can't fight love and we have to choose love over hate. Oh, yeah, I we need not, to, no, it, it was, no you thanks. know, the message 
doesn't go that deep. Yeah, you really believe that love is the greatest thing because you put all that aside in favor of it. But I do think it had a lot going for it. I did get the sense in some of these scenes that it was very aware of white supremacy. So it's like, it's not, it's not totally ignorant. And I don't want to make it seem like I think it is. I think the story deserved an update and this is definitely a good update. Visually, like not a one complaint, not one complaint. Every problem is with the original and how it carries over pretty much. And the fact they didn't change it, but I totally agree. So in terms of the movie's awards prospects, since the reviews came out, it's been clear that this might actually be a front runner because people are so head over heels for it. And I think easily the movie is getting nominated in picture, director, supporting actress, cinematography, production design, costumes, editing, sound. Those are all no brainers. Some iffy ones. Could Rita Moreno pull off a double nomination, a second supporting actress nomination? There's definitely a narrative like the fact that she was part of the first and won the Oscar and she's back and it's been like 60 years since her last nomination. Well, I think it's possible, but not necessarily likely. There was enough there that I would understand it. Could Mike Face get nominated for supporting actor? He's getting a lot of rave reviews. I don't know that I came away from the movie quite seeing that. I mean, I saw that he was great in it, but I think without the name recognition as some other contenders, it might be a little bit of an uphill battle for him still, but we'll see, it could happen. I also think it's a little bit the perception maybe that he's younger. I would say the same for David Alvarez. Like I thought he was very good, but I don't know if people are going to be putting him on their ballots. I've seen more people mentioning Mike Face than him. Yeah, that's so. another thing. Ariana DeBose, I really think could win. I thought maybe she might win. And then she had like two more scenes. I think it's actually ridiculous to give Katrina Balfe the award over Ariana DeBose here. And I think Katrina Balfe deserves the nomination. I just thought this was really strong work and such a memorable character. I think I will switch over to predicting her until I'm proven wrong. The movie might be really competitive in certain technical categories, like mm -hmm. cinematography. I mean, it could win cinematography. Dune is sort of the front runner in a lot of these technical categories, like production design, in cinematography, sound, but it seems like West Side Story has the chance to overtake it or at least nip at its heels in some of these categories. I do um, think costumes it could also win, especially if it really is a threat to win Best Picture, which I think it may be. Seems like a lot of people don't have the problem that we have. They're just having a great fucking time. You could give this a decent amount of awards. You could give it some text. You could give it Ariana DeBose screenplay because Power of the Dog is really the only other competitor. And if that movie is not as strong as we think it is, maybe they go with Tony Kushner. That is a writer who's kind of well known. I don't think that it should win over Jane Campion, but I think yeah. it could happen. Yeah. And Spielberg, he could win director for this. He could win director for this. He directed the shit out of it. Musical yeah. scenes are stunning. This movie could have a shot at surprising at the PGA. It's probably going to win the Golden Globe for comedy. I don't think it's going to run away and become an easy, clear, obvious front runner and just yeah. go on and win all the awards in the Oscar. All I know is that I think it may pose a threat. If it does become this seemingly obvious front runner, still be skeptical that Belfast could take it at the end of the day, even at that point. It has like a love over hate message. It's very obvious, but people could also perceive it as being like relevant. To yeah, our that's times a good point. And, shit. Good point. and Belfast isn't. Would you have this at number one? No, I think I still have Belfast at one, but I might have a number two. Yeah, I think this is number two right now. The crafts are truly Oscar worthy and the performances as well. Yeah, I love so much about this movie, but then there's just the one thing that I am I just really don't like. And I don't like it so much that it brings the movie down a lot. Yeah, I'm giving this one a seven out of ten. Yeah, I'll give it a seven out of ten. Puerto Rico is in kind of an economic crisis and it's the United States' fault. And I would encourage people to look more into that because it's like actually really upsetting to read. But essentially, you know, all we want Puerto Rico for is just for cheap labor. We overlended money into them and then blamed them for taking that money. And now they're in an economic depression because we said, no, you can't have any more money. And we're basically like starving their economy, even though economists know that starving an economy of money and slashing your quote unquote budget doesn't make your economy grow. It just puts you in a depression and there's no way out of a depression except for to inject more money into it. And also Puerto Rico is a part of the United States and we do have a responsibility. And also the depression it's in is a product of our own colonialism. I wanted to throw that out there for food for thought. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Is there a limit to your forgiveness?